Hello, and welcome to the Move Better at Home podcast, where I, Laura Turner, a physical therapist and strength coach, talk about home fitness solutions to help you move easier, improve your fitness, and enhance how you move throughout your entire life. Now let's get on to the show. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the Move Better at Home podcast. Today, I have with me Corey Jung from uh, California and Upright Movement. Thank you so much for joining me today, Corey. I look forward to talking with you and getting to know you a little bit better. Thank you. Good morning. And likewise. So tell me a little bit about your own personal fitness journey and um, what brought, how you got here today. Well, it starts in my youth. You know, my, my, my childhood at home, uh, being outdoors, being uh, active was just a, a source of joy and, and still is for me today. Um, and unfortunately, uh, noticing my parents when I was young, uh, they weren't so healthy, happy, and fit. And uh, to, me, to me, it seemed like they were trapped in their bodies. And like I said, they weren't all that happy. And as a young child, it, it just, that had no I had no interest in that as far as that being my future. And so I, I, to, I totally kind of did a, a 180 or at least a 90 degrees from, from where they were. And, and they both died uh, relatively early in their life, uh, both in their 60s. And uh, growing up, uh, they, they weren't all that uh, vital. And it's just seeing that if we, we, ne we neglect ourselves and, as far as the quality of life, it's uh, it's not as great as one might like it to be. And I'd like just to, you know, get the most out of our, our time here, you know, and uh, and also share that too with others. And that's that's what I'm doing today. And uh, so, from my youth to my adulthood, I also then went into the Marine Corps, and and then I, I had a 20 year career in law enforcement, and uh, the body being, you know, the primary vessel vehicle that kind of moves you through life and that you can have all these tools and, and whatnot, but uh, first and foremost, you know, your, your body, uh, you know, having a sound mind within a sound body. And uh, I retired and uh, you know, the, the other later chapter of my life, uh, still being of service and Helping people to you know feel better and move better and perform better and and in whatever context it may be. Uh, and so, what is your uh, what is you, well for you personally? What's your training routine look like these days? Well, my, my myself. Yeah. Uh, well, due to COVID uh, <laughs> and and, uh, and here in California, uh, the, the gyms are currently. Uh, restricted and uh, so i'm i'm outside a lot more than i normally have been and just hiking a lot i think uh i even got a uh one of these smart watches to kind of monitor and everything and i think since october i've accumulated about sixty thousand feet of elevation gain with wow. my hikes and so that, that's kind of fun for me to kind of uh, get get a glimpse of and like oh it's about two Everest you know but yeah. uh, you know being out in nature and uh, it's kind of a a, a meditative process as, as well so I am I'm exercising but I'm also kind of in, in for me in, in somewhat of a state of meditation and uh, restoration and contemplation it's a uh, nature heals yeah it's nice yeah that's been uh during my time off, uh, I was doing, I mean, I've always walked or I try to run. I don't run very well or much, but, um, but I was, you know, taking a lot more walks and actually trying to unplug a little bit, um, and just look at, you know, let myself feel the senses or, you know, um, explore the senses a little bit more. Um, and I, and, you know, I, I, I've said this to other people that, I've seen more people outside and doing the same. And I think that's been a huge benefit of this time is that we are, um, one, we're getting outside more Two, we're people are 
being more active and, and moving a little bit more, at least outside, because um, I'm seeing a lot more people walking than I ever used to, um, or biking even. But um, and being able to take the, the meditative end of it, I think, is is huge. Like letting yourself be quiet and be uh, let yourself just live, <laughs> you know, without. Because I think you know, traditionally we're always on the go and health and fitness in our general lifestyle just takes a back seat. And so being able to take that quiet time and like recognize where we are just today, I think is, it has been a huge blessing. Um, so um, it must be really cool out. Like I think Northern, I think of Northern California, I have friends that are out there and uh, as that you can be outside a little bit more than necessarily here in the Northeast in the winter time. But maybe maybe not as much because you get a lot more snow too, right? In the oh, gen- where I am gen- generally, yeah, yeah, where you are. I, I'm like close. I'm close to the coast, so we don't get the snow unless we go say maybe two hours in- inland. But we're having uh, a winter that's that's in my opinion is subpar, so it's not as cold and as wet as it normally is. So. Yeah. Like, I don't know, I think it was 60 something yesterday. Yeah. It's a it's d- different winters, but um, mm-hmm. nice to be able to get outside still, too. And, and uh, anyways, uh, so t- let's talk about upright movement. What, um, tell me about upright movement. How'd you start it? And um, what do you do for training there and um, your philosophy? And Well, thank you. Um... I, I started this in uh, the beginning of 2015. You know, as, this is my my persona, <laughs> <laughs> my, my 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 public my business persona. But I've been practicing myself, like I said, for for many years. Um, I've lived up here in Northern California since 2010, and prior to that, I was in San Diego. Like I said, that I had a career as a police officer. I was with the San Diego Police Department. And so on my days off at times, for about two years at least, I was working in a uh, spinal cord injury recovery facility. It was called Project Walk at the time. It was based out of Carlsbad. Yeah. And so I was there for two days out of the week. And it's like, uh, I would describe it as being more like movement-based, uh, movement uh, restoration, re-education, uh, helping people who were in wheelchairs to uh, hopefully, ideally, be you know, get upright and be independent, get as much function as possible, and perhaps even walk again. In some cases, that happened. Yeah. I think in most cases, uh, they, did, they did develop a little bit more autonomy, uh, bowel and bladder function, better digestion, better immunity. And also, uh, they were able to move a lot more and minimize pressure sh- sores, for instance. And so working with that populace, uh, and then this was uh, early 2000s. And uh, I-, I was also going to school you know, for exercise science at the time. So I was working full time as a police officer, going to school okay, nine hours a week, working two days. So I was busy. Wow. Yeah. And, <laughs> yeah. But, you know, this is what we do when we're passionate, right? Right. right. And then uh, I remember at, at school, there was a lot of talk in, in class about, you know, sports specific, sports specific. And then I was working with this, these people. And it's like, there's more than sports. Like, what, what preceded sports? Hmm. Human specific. Yeah. Human specific. And uh, so I started to investigate things a little bit more through that lens. And, you know, 90% of our species experience time on earth has been that of nomadic hunter gatherers, upright bipedal. We're we're the only species that does that as uh, as well as and as its primary movement signature. So I, I started to, you know, look more into, you know, through that lens. And so this idea of being upright, you know, goes back to at least that time period. And then when I was uh, 
when I moved, first moved here 10 years or so ago, I, I started working in a, in a big box. This is after I, re, I, was, I retired from the Santa Police Department and was starting anew. And then they gave me the, the, the workout schedule as far as the classes for the members of the gym, right? And I had all the, you know, this is stuff that many of us recognize, you know, the high intensity, the, the, the boot camps and this, that, and the other thing. And they said, well, you can do uh, whatever you want to do. And I, so I saw what they had, you know, available, what was being uh, offered. And I said, okay, well, we have enough of this. What, what about some other things, you know, uh, some contrast? And, uh, yeah, I came up with a class Tuesdays, Thursdays, uh, just before noon, if I recall. And uh, I called it, what did I call it? I think I called it Movement 101, you know, the, the essentials and this working that things from, you know, movement, literally from the ground up. So, you know, a lot of developmental yeah. movement, you know, kind of borrowing from uh, Pavel and Kolar and Wojta, uh, you know, out of the Czech Republic, uh, you know, the DNS community, uh, you know, FMS, of course, Greg Cook. And then uh, I, I've been familiar with Mike Boyle, since uh, the late 90s and i remember corresponding with him right after the athlete's performance the very first mentorship out of their uh former tempe facility on asu yeah. in october 2004 and then he contacted me asking me you know what did i think about it and i think he at that around that time period he, he was helping mark for about a year or so out of the uh athlete performance carson Home Depot Center. And so, you know, at least those three communities, you know, the FMS, yeah. you know, the Mike Boyles, uh, DNS, and also, you know, Mark Verstegen, and uh, which, you know, uh, Mike and Mark are very close friends. Yeah. Uh, just going about things, let's just say a little bit differently than the status quo. And, uh, work, you know, working on people's uh, movement, movement precedes exercise as far as, you know, the typical yeah. gym exercise. Right. And that community was mostly women, uh, retirees, and I feel for that populace and, and lichen populaces that, <clears throat> excuse me, they're looking past the typical fitness uh, focus that you see a lot of times uh, I think it's often the popular culture is promoting you know a, cal a caloric emphasis a, a body comp emphasis a muscular emphasis you know aesthetics and uh, perhaps that's more uh, speaking to this people who are within the springtime of their life yeah. you know and maybe, you know, summer and, you know, we're, you know, looking at people and fitness as if it's perpetual summer when we do have, you know, the other later seasons of life. And so I really feel that, you know, in the big picture, you know, for me, I'm focusing on locomotion, you know, primarily that of walking, resilience. And longevity and this is what those people were looking for that i found in, in the um the gym community and the class that i was then offering and then i was there for about four years and i remember you know speaking to the people and using the term upright quite often because i, I feel that we kind of lose that relationship especially later on in life uh, a lot of people mentioned that like oh i used to be i don't know five six and now i'm five four and uh sure we do lose some bone mass and perhaps some uh disc you know the hydration within yeah. our desk but i feel that the biggest uh loss of our height is because we lose the relationship of our curves 
I, I remember seeing a video or so of your years. I think you spoke about uh, the Brugger's cogs. Yep. You know, the, the domes, the spinal positions, uh, our, 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 our relationship with our body in, in space in, within an upright context. And when I reintroduce that uh, emphasis to people, it's interesting. Even people in their senior years, when they uh, go in to see their doctor for their yearly checkup, the doctor often mentions that they're like an inch and a half taller because they're just more conscious of their curves. Yeah, that's awesome. You know? So yeah. I, I was like saying upright, upright, upright. Yeah. yeah. You know, anyhow. Yeah. So I mean, that's kind of that in a nutshell. Oh, I love that. I, um, DNS is something that's been on my radar for a while that I haven't really, I haven't been able to. Uh, take any, but I, every time I hear of it, I'm like, oh, I need to get back and like explore that because I, my own uh, school journey, I started and I really wanted to work with neurological uh, clients, head injury really. Um, and I loved, uh, it was neurodevelopmental technique, I think at the time. Um, but it was basically along the same lines of like taking through developmental uh, postures, positions, and uh, retraining the nervous system in that. And I like, I like the, the, um, the theory or the, you know, the DNS system and um, training from the ground up. Um, and then you, you talk on the um, upright posture and gait and um, you know, that's a, another big focus and that's where I, uh, with the cogs and stuff and creating actual movement through our joints and our spine. And like, cause I think it's a fact of life right now. We all, we sit a lot between TV, computer, driving, you know, and that, and we don't, we, we lose a lot of our upright and, and everything stiffens down. And we, I, you know, as a physical therapist, people come in to see me and like, why am I so stiff and I can't move? And uh, older clients, you know, well, older being anywhere from like 35 plus will complain about why, you know, I'm so stiff and I can't move. And it's like, well, cause we're not moving. We just block ourselves down and don't create that upright position. Um, and it doesn't necessarily even have to be upright, like being out flat and out straight to start to create some length through your body. Um, I think is it, it's huge and it's a missing piece um, that I think is, I'm going to say it's easy to incorporate into our routine and to, into a day to make corrections and, and regain height um, not that it's simple to do, but it's, you know, like it's easy to, to incorporate in the day. So I love that you're doing that. I think that's, that's a huge value to people and really cool. Did you, uh, did you find that people, so I agree with you, like our general culture and, and classes, like in, I'm not, I don't currently belong to a fitness center, but the classes were very much high intensity, uh, body composition. And, you know, I want the same thing for my own being but now i think okay i want to be strong so i can hike and do things that i want to be able to do forever um so my mindset's a little bit different and overall um but did you so did you find that people would, would they were receptive to that i mean it sounds like they you had a good following in your movement 101 class um or did, or was it a struggle to get people to kind of pay attention? Like, Hey, I, I want to move. And it's, this is not traditional. Like I'm going to burn a thousand calories and be able to, you know, do whatever. <laughs> I, I did have a hardcore group that was dedicated for four years. Yeah. Um, I feel, I, I think I, I did mention something along the lines of like, in my experience, typically people who, this is say I've been around the block for a while, you know, or around the sun at least, you know. Yeah. yeah. It's that uh, they're they're looking at things through a, a more of a panoramic lens. Uh, not, not so you know body comp aesthetics, you know this that, and the other thing is fine, but it, it probably doesn't have much value, or it's like a bit like paper mache if you're in chronic pain. Yeah. Or if you can't do the things that you like to do right. or that you need to do, you want to do. I mean, unfortunately, currently, we have 100 million or so people in this country who are in a chronic pain, about, you know, one out of three. And then we have a huge opioid epidemic, unfortunately, that's, you know, interrelated with that. And so uh, 
this is not, in my eyes, it's not normal. I mean, our species has been around for tens of thousands of years. I mean, they, they, just found the, they just found some cave painting art somewhere. I forget where, where I heard it as far as where in the world in the news here recently, but like, they, that dates back to 45,000 years or so. So we've been around for, you know, right. a considerable amount of time. And, you know, 90% of that, you know, nomadic hunter gatherers. And so what we're experiencing today, uh, it, it, like within the cosmic calendar, let's just say, just happened. Yeah. It's just a few cosmic seconds ago. So we have these ancient bodies in this, this new world. It's very technology uh, and intense and automated and everything's, you know, convenient and, and it's, you know, things are being done for you. And it's a, it's a mismatch. And I, and I feel that ourselves as well as many other life forms, when they experience a mismatch outside of the environment that pretty much molded them for eons, we suffer, we suffer, we, we suffer physically, mentally, emotionally, perhaps even spiritually. Yeah. And so uh, movement can be medicine. It can also be poison, mm -hmm. right? It depends. It depends on the type. It depends on the dose. Uh, so I'm, I'm, I'm a big fan of just right. Yeah. And, and, and being consistent and, you know, borrowing from the old, uh, uh, that story, you know, the tortoise and the hare. You know, it's a, like life is a marathon. Uh, and so I think when people started to experience that, that they felt like, oh, this is like very restorative and powerful of the body. And, you know, once again, locomotion, resilience and longevity. And then so if you're moving constantly, or consistently on a regular basis, a lot of times, as far as aesthetics, BMI, it's gonna, it's a byproduct. Yeah. When, when, you, when you restore the nature of the body, and I, I like to play around with this word, and I, I think I borrowed this from uh, Brian McKenzie of Shift, and his art of breath, you can look him up on the internet, yeah. but the, he, he spells nature with a capital U-R. That's you know, awesome. That's within the word, right? Yeah. Nature. Yeah, yeah, you are in nature. Yeah. And so uh, when you were, you know, nature is a teacher, body is a teacher, teacher because your body yeah, emerged from nature. And so I tell people this, that as far as the smartest one in the room, it's not me. <laughs> it's your body. It's ground. It's gravity. It's your environment. And that's what movement is. Okay. It's interacting with your environment. I don't know. I don't know that's if I got awesome. to your question. <laughs> yeah, no, no, I love that. That I think that's uh, that's spot on. Like, and I think what I try to instill in my clients is like, listen to like, you know, it's uh, it's a journey. Not everything is going to feel great, and sometimes, um, hopefully, we don't find the poison in the journey. But like, we find, you know, it's not everything's going to work for everybody. So you got to explore, and you got to find what movement feels good and you've got to explore your environment to get those different to get the different feedback um from nature you know that that of the things that are around us because you know we, we wear earbuds and we block everything out and we we miss a lot and so exploring and listening to what you're feeling how you're feeling what you're seeing and uh what it uh just what it feels like i think is a, is a key piece in, in keeping our bodies moving and feeling healthy um and feeling good about what we're doing so yeah i think that's awesome it's a key key this i'm gonna find that book i haven't heard of that yet but which book the it was a well brian mckenzie you said was it a, is it a is that his name uh it, 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 no he he's a i don't well yes i think he does have a few books but i i definitely know he has a website and i want to call it's called shift and i think there are some courses that they were uh, giving. Hmm. One of them is called the art of breath. Um, 
so big on breathing yeah and and what is it uh regulating one's nervous system yeah right especially the autonomic nervous system yeah and uh i I think we we touched upon that a little bit within the pre-interview and so breathing's movement we do about twenty thousand or so times a day eight million times or so a year and another guy i like to follow when it comes to uh, movement is uh oh Patrick McCohen, I believe, Oxygen Advantage, uh, out of Ireland. Well, so of him either. That's... being being CO two uh, tolerant, and uh, you know, modulating the breath. You know, being mindful of yeah. the breath, rather than it, the breath running away from us, and uh, trying to breathe through the nose as much as possible, you know, especially when you're doing activities or sub uh, maximal effort. I mean, there is a time and a place for everything. So sure, you will breathe through your mouth at times, but primarily though, this is what this is what the nose is for. And this is for speaking and, and eating, yeah. right? Much, much more yeah. so. And then and when we breathe in the nose, uh, nitric oxide, inhalation, we tend to have a little bit more of a a sympathetic shift, exhalation, we have a bit more of a parasympathetic shift. And really parasympathetic, you know, the restorative branch of the, of the autonomic uh, nervous system, right? Rest, digest, yeah. repair, you know, reproduction, whatnot. That ideally should be our default. However, I feel it's less so the case yeah. nowadays. And so I think sometimes people look at like stress as, you know, oh, we have to get rid of stress. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know if that's really possible. Rather than, you know, looking to attack that, let's look to restore and really uplift uh, the autonomic nervous system, you know, as far as regulation, you know, more of the parasympath- parasympathetic side of that, and as, well as, uh, as well as the vagus nerve, you know. And the yeah. vagus nerve basically runs from the head through the body all the way to the pelvis. The body is that. Uh, some people would call it the core. Yeah. Everything that's essential to life from head through the spinal column to the pelvis. Right? And the, the limbs emerge from that. Um, and I, I wanted to touch back uh, something that we were talking about earlier. So exercise, right? I think a lot of times people look at exercise through this lens of, okay, I'm on the treadmill, I'm lifting this weight, the elliptical, this, that, and the other thing. Exercise is from the Latin word. So Latin, it means to practice. So if we're looking to upgrade our life through movement, through health, right, fill in the blank. For me, at least, I would say that could, that could mean to be, to practice essentially everything. If I just work out one hour a day and that's it, and I don't really consider much outside of that, let's just say, one hour is one, is 4% of the day. Right. I got 96% remaining. What else am I going to do? So, so the mindset, the recovery, the the nutrition and exercise to practice through the day yeah yeah throughout the, yeah. so it's yeah. every every moment every breath essentially becomes a repetition that's uh that's awesome and i wanted to make it make it a habit yep. you know and make it lifelong this is this is beyond a, ch- a 30 day, you know, New Year's resolution challenge. Right. I mean, the biggest challenge, the way I, I see it, is that we live in a world of mismatch. We're, we're wired for health, for fitness, for vitality. And we have ancient bodies, essentially. You know, if, if at a cellular level, our, our, our bodies are that of the Paleolithic era. You know, so we have anywhere from, say, a thousand to four thousand generations preceding us. 
you know we we have a a a, a body a, a body of legacy that that ever a species and and it's unfortunate we have 100 million people or so on average in chronic pain this this is a, uh, this is abstract to me because i'm thinking like if our body if the body of our species long ago was that let's just say fragile we probably would not have made the journey mm -hmm. and, and made it and, be, and made it to, and be here today we 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 pretty mark we pretty pretty much marched the globe all four corners of the earth on foot for 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 eons the body is designed it's really you you think you have a utility vehicle maybe in in your in your garage or your your driveway guess what you are a your 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 first and foremost nature's first and foremost all train vehicle it's true and i think people forget that you know like or don't uh, maybe never knew it right now but um you know if you don't take care of that vehicle and you don't um exercise as you described through the day vehicle and practice you know then uh your vehicle rusts and goes and sits in the garage and does nothing um so yeah you're right that's a and and that is um and i i think i struggle a little because the technology is what it is and that's i think is part of our own evolution and i think it's and i I mean, we wouldn't be sitting here talking today if we didn't have technology. So I think it's a, it's good for that, but it also has, you know, we, it's a balance and that's the practice of the balance again, like using, uh, allowing technology cars and not just, you know, electronic, uh, computers and phones and whatnot, but just in like lights and everything, like being, like taking time away from all of that and, and, uh, practicing getting back into our normal self i think can really help our whole body to being to to feel better um and and it's interesting to explore i gotta i gotta sit on that a little bit on how that actually contributes into chronic pain because uh i i absolutely think that's a you know losing that movement losing that losing more than just movement but like the whole uh mindful nervous system everything contributes i think into chronic pain uh immensely um and yeah, hopefully we i like could maybe because it's the world that i live in or i you know the, the where i go looking for education uh, and seeing more people talking about ways to manage that and getting back into uh living life without not even necessarily without without pain but like but living life and being and creating movement so i hope that that's going in as a as a society we are going in that direction and away from opioids i don't think we're there yet i think it's um, but hopefully hopefully we're starting to talk about it so that's a huge you know piece starting the conversation mm -hmm. um, I, and uh, you're talking like I talk all the time about breathing, and I, I joke with people because I I remember when I first started incorporating more breathing into my physical therapy practice, people would look at me and be like, "I breathe all the time. I don't need to sit and practice breathing." And like, and uh, and since then, I've learned like, yes, you do. You have to breathe, or else you wouldn't be here. But like. The intentional breathing and like the learning how to use your breath to quiet your nervous system or learning how to use your breath to improve your core or uh quiet your mind any any of that like it's it's practice and we we don't do it because we are in the sympathetic state all the time of just go and we don't exhale you know um and uh, enough and um so I, I love that we have that conversation more now too and it, I think people are starting to recognize that a little bit more. Starting. <laughs> right, right, right. Yeah. Uh, I have a few ideas when it comes to chronic pain. Tell me. Um, <laughs> I mean, the, the body is the teacher. 
pain can also be the teacher. True. And so sure we have, unfortunately, you know, some of us might experience some injuries. And so there's some tissue damage, right? But say like after six months, 12 months or so, the tissue is fine, right? But a lot of times there's still pain. So what is that, right? Uh, nervous system. Mm -hmm. I think they said something along the lines uh, earlier last year, like ACL injuries, for instance. You know, two years post, uh, they did some brain imaging and saw that there was changes in the brain, right? Is that, do you recall that? I don't. Something, I, or something along the, yeah. something along those lines. Yep. Yeah, I haven't, I haven't re heard, read that, but it makes complete sense. <laughs> Right. Yeah. So I think we, I think we're overly fixated on our muscles at times. Mm -hmm. Right. Muscles are dumb. Yeah. So what? What are? So we're think. Think of embryology. Right. Think of fascia. Embryology, emergence. Right. Started out one as one cell. Today we have maybe a hundred trillion cells, depending on who's counting, right? Yeah. There's a lot of cells. Yeah. And then the fascia is basically connected to every cell, including the DNA. So can we really isolate them? Yeah. We exactly. isolate, we isolate so as to where we can wrap our brains around something. So we do, do we do that more for ourselves. If you were to ask nature, like, hey, you know, can I isolate this from that? Nature would probably just laugh at you. And I, I kind of have this thought experiment that I play around with myself sometimes. Like, ask the body, what are you thinking? What are you thinking? What's, what's, what's the body thinking? And so I have this down somewhere. Uh, so the body, the body's probably thinking, you know, like if you were to ask any one cell within the body, it's like, am I safe? That's probably what it's thinking, you know, to start off with. Uh, and then, oh, geez. Where, where am I? Okay. One second, one second. Am I, am I safe? Do I have access to, to nutrients? You know? Yeah. Can, can I, uh, you know, run the bodily processes? Can I trans, can I transport myself within space towards resources and perhaps away from something else that might see me as a resource? And then can I, can I perpetuate the genes? As far as, far as the, if the body as a whole, if you're asking any cell, you know, hey, what are you thinking? It's not thinking it's six, it's six pack or this, right. that, the other thing, right? Right. Uh, the, going back to the pain, I think it's a lot about uh, seeing pain as a teacher and seeing wherever it is that you're experiencing pain, not as the enemy. Yeah. I think I've heard this and you might have heard this, like people like look at their knee or their back and, and they talk negatively about it. And the thing is, that's you. Right. And I also kind of look at it through the lens of say, Joseph Campbell's monomyth, the hero's journey. If you're familiar with Joseph Campbell in, in mythology. And so this is a journey. Life is a journey. And so where we see, uh, like within art, you know, television, movies, for instance, some examples of the, the, the hero's myth, the hero's journey would be uh, Star Wars. That's a classic yeah. example of the hero's journey. Uh, Lord of the Rings. We could, yeah. we could see this within that many. So okay. there's, a, there's this, this separation. There's this call to, to the adventure. You know, the unknown, you know, crossing the threshold into something unknown and fine. 
And then within that journey, there's going to be perhaps a, a, a death experience where you're severing the old and basically you're taking on the new. And then so then you're seeing your, yourself and life and living through a different lens. Is this, is this, as if the, we might remember this within the movie, uh, I think it was the very first movie too, to be uh, colorized was uh, Wizard of Oz, yeah. right? So in the yeah. beginning of the movie, or the first half is black and white, and at a certain point, the veil gets pulled back, becomes color, oh. right? Right. That's, that's a hero's journey there as well. You know, Wizard of Oz. Yeah. And so you 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 get tested. You so there's this call of adventure, the unknown. Oh, okay, I don't know what I'm gonna do with my body, this, that, and the other thing. Okay. If I'm going to really take this on, I'm gonna dive in to the unknown. It's a little terrifying. I'm gonna experience some guides along the way. Right, the Tin Man, the Lion, the Scarecrow, maybe a physical therapist, maybe a trainer, mm -hmm. maybe maybe uh, maybe a talk therapist, maybe a nutritionist. Right, I have all these friends of mine that I'm coming across on this yellow brick road, and then I come back. Right, I come back. Uh, I'm having a a different experience now, and a lot of times the 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 role of the hero. The responsibility upon their return is to share, to help others on their journey, and that's that's that, that, that's what it is for me, and, and perhaps even for you. Yeah, I love that. I love that an, uh, analogy. I think that's, uh, and I think you uh, you know, incorporating the pain into that's part of who you are, and that's part of your journey. And like, okay, so what am I learning from it? And um, and what can I take to be on the other side of it also? Yeah. And probably you're learning that I'm, I need to breathe more, yeah. more, more, more fully. Yeah. I need, I need, I need, I need to slow down and rest, uh, spend time in nature, you know, sunlight, times of quiet, uh, return to the activities that I probably put on the, on the shelf for many years. You know, find your yep. joy, uh, meaningful relationships, uh, healthy food, and, and eating it in a way to where you're really taking time with it. You're not just shoveling it down your mouth. Yeah. You know, you're you're basically you're you're appreciative. Like, wow, th this food was once alive, and it's basically giving its life in service to me. You know, life gives life. Life eats life. You know. Be mindful, and then you know, doing movements, right? That feel good, right? And you know, movement snacks, movement snacks throughout the day. It doesn't have to be this this killer, this torturous. I get it, you know, beast mode, grind, what whatever we want to call it, type of thing. It's something that like it's giving us as much as so. I, I like to do a workout to where I feel I feel energized, not depleted. Because basically, you're expending energy. And so do I want to expend so much energy, so much energy to the point to where I have nothing left to rebound, right? Work plus rest equals rest. Yeah, work plus rest equals success. Work plus rest equals resilience. So the two sides of the balance scale. So like if I work out, that's going to be a bit more sympathetic. So what am I counterbalancing it with? What am I doing to help restore the, the autonomic nervous system balance a bit more towards the parasympathetic uh, branch of things? If I, if I can't have an anabolic rebound, I'm just going to be in this perpetual state of uh, catabolism, perhaps inflammation, right? Right. Inflammation, pain, redness, heat, swelling, impaired function. And that has a lot to do with the autonomic nervous system. I feel like perhaps that's where a lot of the pain is coming from, right? Yep. Autonomic nervous system dysregulation. 
mitochondrial dysregulation, circadian rhythm dysregulation, and probably doing movements, you know, traditional exercises that are a bit abstract in the big context in the, in the, in the big context of our species, right? You, like I, I'll, hear, I'll hear people identify themselves. Oh, I'm a cyclist. I'm this, that, and the other thing. Human first and foremost, those are activities you, that you enjoy and you partake in. That, that's just a, a yeah. specific, I mean, I, yeah. I, would I would like, I would prefer to be, I would prefer to be human specific, say 80% of the time, and whatever sport specific, maybe the remaining 20% of the time. Unless you're a professional athlete, right? Sure, but if you're wanting to be a healthy and have a long career, uh, 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 longevity within that career, perhaps you also want to consider, you know, the body within the, the bigger context. Right. And I think even if you are, and, and probably restore some of those properties. Exactly. I think I think people. Uh, so even with professional athletes they would likely have more longevity if they recognize that like you're, you're a human move and, you know, treating your butt, respecting that whole process in addition to your second being, <laughs> whatever that, yeah. Um, I think that's, and I think that mm -hmm, also, mm -hmm. um, I think that's great advice because it, it's something that you can carry with from the time that you're a child to the time you, in the winter of life, you know, that, that if you look at movement and our, our humanity is that it allows you to have some form of mobility practice, whether it, you know, throughout your life, you know, and that you can do something that you enjoy and finding something that you can uh, continue to do through life. Like, and if you can look at it that way, it doesn't have to be like, I have to, you know, uh, deadlift 700 pounds you know you know it's uh it allows you to to create some natural movement and and you will feel better and your body will react to that better it all kind of comes together um so yeah that's that's awesome i can't we've been talking for almost an hour and i can't believe it um this has gone really fast i i am fascinated and uh, uh look forward to uh, continuing to talk with you more is there a, um, and I think there's some phenomenal ad advice already here. Um, do you have a specific, uh, do this at home, try this at home tip that people could use to take away um, on any aspect that we've talked about, but. Hey, I'm kind of, uh, say again now. So do you have a, um, is there any, is there Low a. Low hanging fruit? Yeah. Is it like the low, the low, the low, the, the low hanging, let's just say movement vitamins. I would say, uh, if, if, if you have an environment that allows a work situation that allows sit on the floor, right? So that is the natural resting position place for us humans, right? The chair has only been around for maybe 5,000 years or so, give or take. Yeah. If you look at all land mammal, well, as far as land mammals that I can think of right now, all land mammals, when they're in a position of rest, they're in full flexion and they're resting upon their body, their bodies are resting upon the earth, right? So, can I get into side sitting? Can I get into kneeling? Can I sit in my butt? Can I get into a primitive squat, right? Can I get into this uh, place to where I'm kind of unloading the joints, right? I'm experiencing decompression, so I'm resting. I'm also getting in this deep flexion that precedes standing and walking, right? So I have the other side of the bookend right i'm i can really coil myself and then uncoil for instance right and so and then like what i'm what i'm doing right now 
I'm basically doing a, a, a half squat sit uh, lunge kneel here. And I'm, I'm truly in a position of rest. I, I've worked and I've seen many people when they get on the ground, they're shaking and they're breathing. Yeah. And then perhaps, and then so like if I was to emerge from here, I'm, I'm, I'm squatting, I'm lunging, I'm standing, I'm stepping, right? Yeah. If I, if I, I feel if I don't own this here, one, I probably, am I ever really truly in a state of, of, of uh, ease and rest, you know, especially throughout the day. And then this is really the, 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 the base foundation platform for my movement and exercise. So if I'm having a problem lunging, let's just say, you know, perhaps investigate, you know, where are you here in space? Yeah. If you, if you don't own it in a resting position, perhaps that's, that's another indicator why you're having problem exercise, you know, when you're doing a standing exercising version of that, and perhaps why you're in pain and, and inflamed. I wouldn't be surprised. Yeah. I wouldn't be surprised. Uh, because we, you know, movement emerged from the ground up, right? right. For, for most of us who had some, you know, healthy, normal development within our first year of life, right? You know, DNS has like a poster that's illustrating month, the third month, all the way to the 13th month to standing, walking. I see those as the ABCs of movement. Yeah. I have the ABCs of movement. I can't create words. I can't create language. Right. And do I have movement literacy? I don't know. Right. So I would recommend, I would recommend that. Yeah. I would recommend ideally a deep squat if we can. Right. Yeah. And then if we, if we don't have that in the other positions on the floor, then grab whatever materials, blankets, pillows, bolsters to help give you just enough assistance, not too much, not too little, just right to, to get you in a position, you know, a modified position of those to where you are in a position of rest and, you know, and explore, you know, constantly move, you know, maybe every few minutes or so, one side and the other side. And if you're sitting this way, okay, imagine, you know, now sitting, now sitting this way, right? There's probably thousands of variants of a, of a dozen or so positions and explore, have fun, discover, learn. And then, you know, it's a process. And then it slowly start to take away some of these props and layers. And then before you know it, you're like, oh, here I am. Right. Uh, so the resting postures, deep squat, you know, ideally, if we can walk, you know, a handful of miles or so a day and hang, you know, do, do some. So this this is the upper body's version of, uh, of resting is reaching overhead and hanging. I mean, even though we're upright yeah. uh, bipedal beings. In, in in other ways, we could also see that perhaps we're also upright upright quadrupeds, you know, up, upright crawlers, upright climbers as well. Because right? what's the other big muscle, right? You know, that bridges right. the upper body, the lower body is the lat, right? So the lat and the glutes. So th this comp the upper core complex here. And then the lower body is equivalent. You know, those are, those are two big engines and a lot of counter rotation happening there. So I would say uh, rolling on the ground. You know, if you're if you're if you're comfortable there already, do some uh, rolling, create spirals, feel the shapes within your body, feel feel the ringing like like you're ringing a towel. You know, the the, the counter. Uh, counter rotations that are occurring and when you're in the middle of the roll like between your uh stomach and your back when you're on the side portion of your whether it's the upper body roll or the lower body roll 
pause and really see and feel like, oh, this mimics gait, right? Because I'm kind of in this, this scissoring of my limbs. Um, that hanging, walking, breathing, squatting, resting on the floor. So what, what is that, four that's or awesome. five? Yeah, that's awesome. All stuff that we need, that we do when we are walking and get, and working and doing it, you know, and that has been our developmental sequence from the beginning. Mm-hmm. So Corey, I would uh, like to I ha- back some, I'm uh, going to, uh, uh, well, finish what you're going to say. Sorry. <laughs> no, I was going to say, uh, I could uh, email you because that's probably the best way since we're doing this now, uh, a link to some resources on my page that uh, go into some of these things as well as nutrition and mindset and, and rest. Yeah. And, you know, if, if we look at the, these simple things that we just kind of went over the handful or so, uh, it reminds me of some of the parts of the world where you have, I think there's currently five blue zones, you know, parts of the world where you have maybe 20% of the populace who are like close to a hundred. Oh. Or yeah, so, yeah, you know? yeah. Uh, Okinawa comes to mind. Yep. So those parts of the world uh, where people are living into the those uh, higher ends of our of our lifespan, a lot of times they're not exercise. Well, like they're not doing traditional exercise. They're yeah. exercising by not exercising by doing these fundamental things consistently daily. And they really don't give much thought not thought to it, right? And they're eating. They're out. They're outside. They're eating nourishing food, and they're having meaningful relationships. Uh, I know that open islands. They have this uh, this word that kind of encapsulates this principle as far as what they feel allows them to reach such a high age compared to you know many of us in, in the West, where it's, I think it's like upper 70s and they're they're outliving us you know some some of them by you know maybe a generation or so right they encapsulate it in one word ikigai ikigai essentially means reason for being so what's their reason for being when they start their day and a lot of times it's not just them it's 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 their it's their friends it's their family it's the land, it's the ancestors, it's legacy, basically. That's awesome. I want to thank you. That's thank you. I want to thank you very much. Thank, well, thank you for being, I, uh, this is phenomenal. I love, and uh, I can't wait to talk with you again sometime because I think this is, uh, I love this topic and uh, could uh, could listen all day. <laughs> um, so tell, uh, I'm, I will uh, post links in the show notes, but tell people where they can uh, reach you if they want to learn more? Uh, uh, well, my website, uprightmovement.com. I am on social media, uh, Facebook and Instagram and YouTube. I'm not so active on social media. I, I, I'm more of a, a traditionalist, let's just say. Uh, so, you know, let's have a, let's, let's have some communication. Let's, let's build a, some trust, some uh, relationship, and just you know, get a hold of me. I'm I'm uh, I'm available. Uh, I'm a, um, I'm open a book, and uh, I'm more than willing to uh, offer my time. Uh, email me, call me, and let's have a conversation and, and build a relationship and, and trust, and, and perhaps work together, whether that's in person or remotely. Uh, I'm a, I'm a resource. I'm here to, I'm here to serve. Awesome. Thank you so much, Corey, for being here. I will post those, post your website link, uh, in the show notes. And, uh, uh, I, I really, I, I love where your mindset is. And I think you have an incredible message to share. Um, and, um, I really appreciate you being here with me today. Um, so thank you very much, Laura. Um, thanks for joining us, everybody. Don't hang up yet, Corey. Um, and I will, we will see you on the next episode of Move Better at Home podcast. Take care. Hey guys, it's Laura again. Thank you so much for listening to the Move Better at Home podcast. I hope you're enjoying the content and are starting to move a bit easier from your home. I have a couple of favors to ask you. 
If you enjoy the podcast, could you hit the subscribe button and leave a review? Mm -hmm. I'd really appreciate it. And if there's an episode that you think somebody else might need to hear, could you share it with them? Thank you so much. Would you like to learn more ways and add some mobility into your day? Check out my YouTube channel. The links are below. If you're interested in working with me for your fitness at home, the link to schedule your free discovery visit is also below. Thanks again for listening, and I look forward to talking with you again soon. Hey guys, thanks for listening to the Move Better at Home podcast. If you're having difficulty managing your health and fitness at home and want to learn more, then follow the